The wave of school unrest across the country in various schools has continued to be a major point of concern among all stakeholders and all Kenyans across board. Many wondering why do we keep finding ourselves in this cycle every day, a new school, another arson attack. Uh, bringing a lot of uh, shocking revelations on what is going on in our schools. A lot of concern from parents, uh, teachers and Kenyans at large on why we keep finding ourselves in this vicious cycle of arson and school unrest. So in this episode of The Front Row, we try and get to the bottom of the issue. This would not be the first time we are witnessing a wave of school unrest and the burning of dormitories and other uh, school uh, institutions in the country. And uh, uh, various reports from various task forces have been uh, given out in various years. We are looking at n from 1991, 2001, 2016, various reports, different task forces saying the same thing. So what is the weakest link in the recurrent wave of unrest in schools? My guests will be helping us uh, get to the bottom of this and also what would be the long-term solutions to this. A lot of people have had something to say about what could be the problem and what could be the solution. So experts are with us here on this episode of The Front Row as uh, we try and delve deeper into the deep-seated issues, if any, on what we are currently witnessing in our schools. Thank you for joining us on The Front Row. I am Akisa Wanderan to be part of this conversation we are asking you in our tweetable question who or what is the weakest link in the recurrent wave of unrest in schools who or what is the weakest link in the recurrent wave of unrest in schools I'm already seeing a lot of responses from you but of course you can use that Akisa Wandera at KTN News KE the hashtag to use is front row I'll be taking a look at some of your questions as we continue with the program and of course you can also ask questions uh, to some of uh, or to our panelists on on this particular show any questions with regards to what is happening is it a systemic issue many of us I'll be posing some of your questions to our panel of experts who are joining us for this conversation let's take a look at who we have I'm speaking to Mboka Milemba, who's a teacher by profession and is the chairperson of the Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers, is also the member of parliament for Emuhaya constituency and serves as a member of the Education Committee, the House Business Committee and Committee on Labor and Social Welfare in the 12th Parliament. He is joining us for this conversation in his capacity both as a national chairperson of PUPET and of course a member of the Education Committee of the National Assembly. Uh, we also have uh, joining us on the panel. I'm speaking to Dr. Lucy Wakiaga, who's an education consultant and a seasoned educator with both local and international experience in early childhood, primary education, um, and high school and higher education with a special focus on policy and educational administration. Currently, she's a research associate and a senior lecturer at the School of Arts and Social Sciences at the Tangaza University College, Nairobi. And she's joining us virtually. Dr. Akiaga, thank you for joining us on the show. And finally, Dr. Julia Sotundo, who is uh, the Dean of uh, uh, School of Education at the Riara University, also the director of Riara Institute, as well as a senior lecturer. And uh, he's also not new to this pilot, and especially when it comes to matters education on the show. Gentlemen and lady, thank you for joining us for this conversation. Before we get to that, uh, let's uh, just set the stage with a report. Students found culpable in the cases of arson in schools will not be admitted to any public schools in the country. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha says recent cases will not affect the school calendar with all set for the national exams slated for March next year. Magoha says incidents of arson have nothing to do with a tight COVID-19 calendar with the country having recorded 239 cases of school fires in the year 2016. Let's take a look at that report. Another school, another case of arson. The latest, Garissa High School in Garissa County. Over 750 kilometers away, a fire raised down a dormitory at Miranda High School in Siaya County. The same night that a dormitory was burnt at Mwala Girls School in Machakos, and another destroyed by fire at Chania Boys High School. Discipline starts from the family. And it is a fact that quite a number of our families have failed us. And let us not pretend that we are burning the building 
because of stress from corona. In the last five years, the country recorded the highest number of school fires in the year 2016, 239 incidents. In 2017, 62 cases were reported. In 2018, 61. In 2019, 63. And last year, only seven cases were recorded. It is stupid, it is primitive, and it must stop. If it does not stop, do not think you are going to force us to close schools. We are not closing any schools. If you are not studying, it is up to you. Your exams are ready in March. You will take them by the grace of God. And by the way, we are talking about 99% of the students. The 1% who want to spoil for others, we shall deal with you circumferentially. The government has indicated that parents will bear the cost of repairs in schools where property has been destroyed and the students found to have played a role will face the law. Just remember that if you are caught, you are not going to go to any other school, definitely not a public school in this country. You will go back and ensure that your parents contribute to the rebuilding of the school that you have built. That is the first one. Secondly, we shall charge you and it shall remain on your record. So when you come to look for a job, or if you are a doctor, and you find out this one was involved in burning your house this way, say, oh, thank you very much. Next. Buruburu girls in Nairobi, Chavakali boys in Vihiga, and Kanjuri High School in Nyeri are also on the list of schools where property has been destroyed and where parents will have to dig deeper into their pockets to pay for repairs as students risk having their school records tainted. Rita Tinina, KTN News. Well, again, just as our reports are there, Rita Tinina started another day, another school fire, and it has become rampant over the past few weeks. And uh, we are seeing what the Education Cabinet Secretary, uh, Professor George Magoha, there has to say. And perhaps uh, let me begin with you, Dr. Lucy Wakiaga. And I'm, I'm informed that currently she's the Acting Quality Director and Senior Lecturer at Tengaza uh, University. Thank you once again for joining us. Let's start from the point of how the government has so far reacted to what is happening to the schools. We've seen that story and a tough talking uh, education cabinet secretary, secretary uh, Professor George Magoha, uh, there tough talking and saying that this will not be condoned and some tough measures are going to be put in place. Your thoughts on how we have chosen to address this? Uh, thank you so much, Akisa, uh, for having me and good evening to my fellow panelists as well. Um, when we look at this whole issue of uh, uh, school fires and uh, all the chaos that it has brought as a result of that. Uh, this is a very complex problem. It is not uh, a problem or an issue that can just, uh, we can just put band-aid and then wish it away. Uh, I know there are immediate stopgap measures that have to be taken uh, in order to deal with the situation. Uh, but there needs to be a long-term solution. This is something that, uh, you know, has been happening periodically, like every so often it happens. But I think this season it has been compounded so much because of all the other challenges that have been brought about, especially with COVID, uh, and having to go back and then uh, it has interfered with the school calendar, making everything very tight. Uh, but I remember Akisa, earlier on, uh, when we were looking into the issue of opening schools uh, and uh, looking at how then do we open schools uh, in a way that will uh, enable the learning environment to be conducive. And some of the suggestions, and I think even uh, Professor himself had set up uh, a, a task force uh, to look into the reopening uh, of the schools. And some of the issues that uh, were being brought up poor. when you open when you reopen the schools these students have been away for so many months. they have undergone a lot of things and there's always this notion that uh, because they are they are younger they, they are younger you know they are uh, you know they are children or they are youth that these challenges that have been brought about by covid don't affect them that they are just affecting the adults which is not the case you have students who lost parents who lost uh, who have parents who lost jobs, uh, the socioeconomic environment became very tight. 
So consequently, what is affecting the parents is definitely going to affect the children. But when the schools now uh, we, were, we were planning to open, there was the suggestion of ensuring the psychosocial support, both for the learners as well as the, uh, the parents, as well as the teachers, as well as the principals. My question is, how well was that psychosocial support done? And then we also, uh, in this uh, discussion uh, that was ongoing, there was also the suggestion that let us not expect that everything was going to go back to pre-March uh, pre 15, 2020 when schools closed. Because things, this is a new normal. It is not the same as uh, before uh, schools were closed in March 2020. But, you know, for uh, whatever reason and whatever decisions uh, that people made, schools were reopened then now we are trying to regularize the calendar and we are dealing with human beings who are experiencing a lot of challenges if we are experiencing these challenges why do we think that these young people are not experiencing these challenges and i'm in no way in no way let me put it on record i'm in no way condoning what the young people are doing uh, of burning the schools really that is not the solution but when we even look at our society, just even on a, normal, uh, on a normal level, how do we even as adults react to situations? We throw stones, we burn things, we become violent. So what are our young people, uh, what is the, what are we role models for, now, for our young people? Okay. For them, they see that this is how you react to situations. Right, and, and so we'll I get... really don't think. Yes. I really don't think that it is an issue of tough talking. Rather, we really need to pull back mm. and really go to the root cause of this issue. Back to the bro you. drawing board, you say. And uh, Dr. Okiega, they're pegging a lot of it to uh, what happened post-COVID and especially the 2020, uh, the, what we saw at the beginning and schools closed for about nine months. She's talked about psychosocial support, which she says would have been very important. As the national chairperson of the uh, Kenya Union of Post-Primary Teachers, I imagine, um, Mr. Milemba, you are very well know what is going what has been going on in the schools you've sat in a number of these task forces as a key stakeholder and a key representative of, of a key group would you peg this on what is happening on covid uh, happening with covid 19 and what happened in 2020 professor magoha disagrees that it has nothing to do with covid well um everybody has quickly uh, blamed it on covid covid and it's true that COVID is there and it must have affected the learners as much as it has affected the parents. It is true that we are living in a new normal, but uh, from where I sit, I don't think we would completely blame COVID because mm. you have just given the, us the statistics. statistics. And I thought the statistics are very correct because the biggest challenge was 2016. Mm. In fact, that's the year when we proposed that we close schools because mm. the numbers were too high. Mm -hmm. but uh, we disagreed with the ministry on whether to close or not. I'm very happy this time. He has been malleable enough as professor. That time it was Matiangi. Professor was malleable enough to say that let's give them half time, which I fully support. Mm -hmm. Let them have half time. How I wish it would have even come much earlier so that we have a form of timeout. You know, I'm a former sports person. If mm -hmm. the game is moving so bad, we mm -hmm. call for a timeout. That would be good for our students. So I don't completely blame it on COVID because we have had a more thorough case of us, us in our schools mm. before, and that was 2016. 16. But COVID may have added because now we have an array of challenges within schools. We have the 100% transition, mm. and then we have COVID. And uh, therefore, the schools are more populated than they were, and mm. we have not put infrastructure in place mm -hmm. to accommodate the many students. And therefore, the students could be running and lining up for food, Mm -hmm. running and lining up for classes, mm -hmm. even lining up for toilets, because some of them don't have enough toilets, and virtually every facility. So the real issue is still just the challenge we had over the years, and uh, that is the boarding section. Mm -hmm. So if we have to deal with this matter uh, conclusively, we shall have to deal with the boarding section of our schooling, because every, every public school in Kenya has a private wing, the private wing is the boarding. Mm -hmm. I know you are a parent, I'm a parent. Mm -hmm. Who pays for the boarding 
within our schools. It's just the parents. It's an agreement, local mm. agreement between the school administration right. and the parents to administer the boarding okay. section. Yet, the teachers are not trained to manage boarding section. Mm -hmm. They are not hoteliers. Mm -hmm. How often do we hear cases of bad food, mm -hmm. bad stay, poor cooking? Mm -hmm. All those are issues that need to be addressed. Okay. And we as a union mm -hmm. have been very uh, stern on the fact that we could question and try to see, do we really need the boarding schools? Mm -hmm. If we did away with the boarding section, I think the discipline would be shared very well. Mm -hmm. The parent would know where the child is coming from, mm -hmm. is going and is coming back to. We will share the discipline between the parents, the teachers, the society, right. and that would be good. Dr. Tundo, uh, is this a boarding school question? Is it a COVID question? Various reports have been churned out over the years. Every time some, such a wave happens, keeps bringing us to the very same issues. Why is it that we are unable to deal with this matter? Good. Thank you, Akisa. Um, this is second term, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. And looking at the statistics back, all this happens during second term. So we need to address the systemic issue around second term. Is it the period or the length of the term? Is it what needs to be reduced? But having said that, then, we need to look at it from the point of uh, the fact that it is not COVID. If you ask me, COVID has very little contribution to this. In fact, uh, the only area I can say that uh, maybe teachers needed to get assisted is to map the curriculum and avoid teaching everything mm -hmm. uh, in any aspect. I think the aspect of curriculum needs to be handled in such a way that uh, the teachers can map it and see what is it that is the most appropriate for what we call constructive alignment. Uh, that is looking at the expected outcomes and, and the end results. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, looking at the statistics you gave us, I am not too sure that I would uh, concede and say it is mm -hmm. COVID. Because a pattern has been established. Yes, a pattern has been established. So it's, a, it's a actually becoming a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Every second term, it's a lifestyle of either if you're not going to serious address and destroying property, you burn the school. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me point, make a point here. There's a lot of blame to parents, a lot of blame to teachers. Uh, let me put, make up a few points about teachers. Having been a teacher and having manned a boarding school before, uh, teachers, I do not know whether Mweshmiwa, there is any extra allowance given to teachers uh, who man boarding schools, but I'm not too sure if there is any. Uh, and basically, uh, sometimes we could be blaming students uh, and you discover that this could also be something instigated by even some of the workers in schools. So we cannot solely just say that all the school fires have been caused by the students. Next is that uh, we are rushing too much over academics other than the real life long of a person. And I'll give an example of the schools like, say, Buruburu Girls. Mm -hmm. They've gone back to school for Form 4s. What is it that was the rush for? That the students must go back when others are still traumatized about what has happened. I know there is a lot of blame on even parents, on parents not having been able to discipline their students. I think I may agree with it or not, but we need to look at the student of the 21st century. We need to look at the dynamic things that are happening today and the change mm -hmm. that is happening in the world today. Mm -hmm. and, and look at it and ask, do students want, how do students want to learn? They want, do they want to learn in boarding schools? Do they want to die in day schools? Mm -hmm. Because I need to hear statistics about day schools that have so far mm -hmm gone on strike or mm -hmm. destroyed property. Mm -hmm. I want to hear about private schools that so far have also gone on strike and destroyed property. So in essence, how are private schools managed? Yeah. What is the infrastructure like? What about the food? Mm -hmm. That means if the public education cannot be able to give to students the comfort they, have in, they must have in school as they could have in their homes possibly, then why not scrap the boarding schools? Mm -hmm and concentrate on quality day schools in every county. Mm -hmm. So I agree with Mweshmiwa that uh, the first thing we need to track is why boarding schools. Yeah. India has very high population. There are no boarding schools. And, and yet students in, in such countries do not get to messes that we have today. Mm -hmm. Teachers, are they happy about boarding schools? Do we have teachers who are ready to work 24 hours 7? Right. 
So that, to me, is a big question that needs okay. to be answered. All right. So uh, I guess just to mention, yes. we um, are more, more reactional uh, than proactive. Than proactive, and yeah. we'll get back to that. I want us to quickly take a short break. Remember, we are asking you who or what is the weakest link in uh, the current uh, wave of unrest, the recurrent wave of unrest being witnessed in our schools. At Akisa Wandera at News KE, the hashtag to use is front row. You can pose any questions to our panelists. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back with more. This is KTN News.